What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this super quick guide, I'll be showing you how to get the best performance out of a Vowed, whether you're playing on the Xbox Game Pass or you've purchased it on Steam or elsewhere. Let's get into it. This video is obviously going to cover only the in-game settings. If you'd like extra performance, make sure to check out the description down below for Windows 10, 11 and related optimization guides to get even more performance out of your system. Starting off at the very beginning, performance is definitely something that you won't expect out of the box from this game. As you can see, I'm getting a solid 37 FPS with not really much going on. The environment is mostly static. There's one NPC here, there's a bit of water stuff going on and some smoke in the distance, but that's really it. Performance is surprisingly bad. I'm running a 3080 Ti playing at 2K with an Intel i9-13900K. If my recording's stuttering, it's just because this game is taking so much to run, even though there's not much happening. By default, this game will have some kind of upscaling enabled, whether that's a DLSS on Nvidia cards or AMD FSR and AMD cards, or otherwise, and with it off, performance is just gonna drop even more. If you want the most out of this game, or even just a more than playable experience, you'll need to adjust quite a few settings. And as you can see him entering the first town, we're now at 34 FPS, so yeah, not the best. Let's start off by pausing the game, heading into settings, and we'll start on the graphics tab. So obviously you'd usually choose full screen for the best performance, but here we're stuck to windowed full screen and windowed, so there's no real difference between these two, it's just how it looks on your system. Resolution should definitely match your display, or at least be compatible if you're playing windowed full screen. Windowed mode, it'll just make the game window smaller, obviously. The frame limit should definitely be set to just below whatever FPS you're actually getting in game, as this should help alleviate some of the weird stutters that you get walking around through the map, etc. by capping this to slightly less than what you're actually getting, which I can't really do as I'm currently on, what, 30 FPS? It means that when you enter new areas, load different shaders and things like that, you shouldn't notice as many stutters as you would otherwise throughout the game. And of course, if you're trying to watch YouTube and things like that in the background, and they're just completely cause with all of your performance going to the game, it should allow them to run just a little bit smoother. Motion blur is your preference, I don't like it, so I'll turn it off completely. VSync should definitely be off unless you're getting screen tearing. And finally, ray tracing on by default if your system supports it. Turn this off in all cases, and you'll need to restart your game for a huge instant FPS boost. So I'll apply changes, save my game, and restart. Why this game comes enabled with ray tracing on by default is your guess as much as it is mine. And just by turning off that one simple setting, I'm now sitting at a solid 50 FPS, which has gone from borderline unplayable to more than playable. Fantastic. Scrolling down further here, we've got upscaling, which is on by default, usually on DLSS or AMD, Fidelity FX, on the quality setting, which should give you, again, a free boost in performance. So instead of getting 30, I would have got 40 something. Now, instead of 50, I should be getting higher, but as you can see, not much has changed. Why is that? Well, simply put, even though we are rendering at a lower resolution, this game, at least in its current state, seems to be pretty heavily CPU limited. So I'd assume if you had a fast to CPU with faster cores, you may get to a point where you're GPU limited, but for now at least it's CPU limited, and there's not too much we can do other than changing some CPU focused options that should give us some better performance. Scrolling down further, Nvidia Reflex Low Latency, if you have an Nvidia graphics card, definitely turn this on, or set it to on plus boost if you're CPU limited, and in most cases you will be CPU limited as well, that's what's holding me back here. This should help slightly decrease your input latency and make the game perform just a little bit better. Scrolling down further, to the advanced settings section, we've got a little bit of customization here. View distance, moving it down to high, I'm still setting at exactly the same FPS, 50, all the way down to low, yet again, still 50, then shadow quality, You'd expect to have a big impact on the game, and while it does technically, lowering this down to low, we shouldn't see a huge boost in FPS as, again, we're CPU limited in most cases. We've gained maybe one FPS, as a result we get more jagged shadows, but leaving this on medium makes the game look quite a bit better, with practically no performance cost, so that's what I'll be leaving it on here. Then texture quality, again this mostly has to do with how much VRAM your system has, somewhere around 4 gigs of VRAM set it to low, 6, medium, 8, high, and anything more or epic should be good. I'll lower this all the way down to the lowest from epic, and you should see there's practically no FPS change, even though the world has turned into some kind of clay mess and slowly being reloaded. Yep, still 50 to 53. So for the most part, this option and view distance shouldn't have too much of an effect on your system. That being said, high view distance is probably better just to make sure nothing weird happens. Shading quality, 
in its current state doesn't seem to do anything between epic and low. Performance wise, it's the same. Looks wise, it's the same. This option is likely broken in some way or another. So I'll just be skipping over it here. Effects quality mostly has to do with combat. If you find that you're dropping FPS as you're spitting out fire or something else like that, I would recommend coming back and lowering this option at most to high for a small FPS boost here and there, or at least a less stuttery experience while you're in combat. But for the most part, again, it's not gonna have too much of an effect. Foliage from high to low, we gain maybe two to three FPS, so it is a welcome change. And similar to shadows, when we move it up to medium, the world looks a noticeable amount better with practically the same performance. So that's where I recommend leaving this. Post-processing quality, once again, has to do with bloom, motion blur, depth of field, etc. So it's not really gonna have much of a performance impact, if any. If you are playing with motion blur and things like that, I'd probably recommend setting this at medium to high just for more stable performance though again it's not going to mean too much finally reflection quality this i assume would have much more of an impact with ray tracing turned on but as that's off in pretty much all cases i definitely wouldn't recommend playing with it on unless you're running a beastly 5090 or something reflection quality is not going to change too much especially because of small surface areas like on armor it's not going to be visible if not affect you in most cases lowering this down too low in a scene with not really any reflection Collections, it does give us a small performance boost, and for that reason, medium or high is where I would leave this. Yep, we're still around 53 FPS, so there you go. And finally, global illumination quality. While you'd expect this to have just as much of a no effect as other settings, this one actually has quite a big one. From 53 down to low, we now get a solid 60 FPS, which is where our cap is. If I raise the FPS cap and head back, we're now at almost 70 FPS. So this change brought across the biggest jump in FPS besides turning off ray tracing. For this reason, I'd recommend having this pretty much as low as possible all the time throughout the game. It looks almost exactly the same for the most part. And moving it from low to medium loses us about three FPS, medium to high, 60-ish, so maybe one to two, and high to epic, we should see a huge drop in performance. Yep, all the way down to 54. So for that reason, I'd recommend probably low or medium, but if you do want to crank this up, high is absolutely as high as I would go. For me, I'll leave this on medium and that's probably fine. All in all, it's super disappointing to see yet another game that's kneecapped itself with performance being just so terrible on most systems. You'll need a beefy system to play this properly, at least at 2K, and a modern and powerful CPU to go along with as well. But anyways, that's really most of what we can squeeze out of it here. As this game is CPU limited, I'd recommend closing as many things in the background as possible, browsers, Spotify, everything you're not actively using right now, just to free up some CPU for this game to take. Of course, a quick reboot of your PC and then launching this game, as well as Discord and whatever else you're using, make sure that most things are closed in the background anyway. So that's probably what I'd recommend you do. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Maybe it's DRM or something getting in the way of performance in this game. And hopefully at some stage in the future, it's more optimized or at least patched up so that it's not too much of a thing dragging down this game's performance. Hopefully you found this video useful anyway. Thank you for watching. Mine's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.